a satellite from the European Space Agency, ESA, re-entered Earth's atmosphere over the North Pacific Ocean between Alaska and Hawaii on Wednesday afternoon, and so far there have been no reports of damage, according to the agency. Remember to subscribe to Money Dynamo, it's free! Stay until the end of the video and find out what other objects have fallen to Earth so far. The agency's Space Debris Office, along with an international surveillance network, monitored and tracked the Earth Observations satellite ERS-2 throughout February to make predictions about re-entry, which occurred at 12.17 p.m. Eastern Time on Wednesday. ESA provided continuous live updates on its website at about 50 miles, 80 kilometers above Earth's surface. The satellite broke apart due to atmospheric resistance, and it was expected that most of the fragments would burn up in the atmosphere. The agency said that it was possible for some fragments to reach the planet's surface, but the pieces did not contain any harmful substances and likely fell into the ocean. The exact time was unclear even in the days leading up to re-entry due to the unpredictability of solar activity, which can change the density of Earth's atmosphere and how the atmosphere pulls on the satellite. As the sun approaches the peak of its 11-year cycle, known as solar maximum, solar activity has been increasing. Solar maximum is expected to occur later this year. The increased solar activity already had an impact by accelerating the re-entry of ESA's ELA satellite in July 2023. It would help us a lot if you hit the like button. The ERS-2 satellite had an estimated mass of 5,057 pounds, 2,294 kilograms, after exhausting its fuel, according to the agency. Uncontrolled re-entry into the atmosphere has long been a common method for disposing of space objects at the end of their mission, said Tim Flora, head of the agency's space debris office, in a statement. We see similar-sized or larger objects than ERS-2 re-entering the atmosphere several times a year. The European Space Agency, ESA, has confirmed that the Heritage ERS-2 satellite, already decommissioned, re-entered Earth's atmosphere on Wednesday over the Pacific Ocean between Alaska and Hawaii. According to the agency, no material damage has been reported. We have confirmation of the atmospheric re-entry of ERS-2 at 1717 Greenwich Mean Time, with about a minute of uncertainty over the North Pacific Ocean between Alaska and Hawaii, ESA states in its ex-accounts. The ESA's Space Debris Office along with other international partners, has been monitoring the orbital decay of this satellite and its natural re-entry into the atmosphere to disintegrate after completing its useful life. When the satellite reached about 80 kilometers from Earth, it began to break into pieces, and it is believed that most of those pieces have completely burned up. The risks associated with satellite re-entries are very low, ESA reminds. Some small fragments may have survived, although it is too early to know. If so, they would have fallen into the sea. Uncontrolled re-entry into the atmosphere has long been a common method for disposing of space objects at the end of their mission, Tim Floor, head of the ESA's Space Debris Office, said in a statement. According to this expert, similar-sized or larger objects than ERS-2 are seen re-entering the atmosphere several times a year. In the 67 years of space flights, thousands of tons of artificial space objects have re-entered the atmosphere. The pieces that reach the surface have rarely caused damage, and there has never been a confirmed report of human injuries. The story of ERS-2 The Earth Observation Satellite ERS-2 was first launched on April 21, 1995, and was the most sophisticated satellite of its kind developed and launched in Europe at that time. Along with its twin, ERS-1, the satellite collected valuable data on polar ice caps, oceans, and Earth's land surfaces and observed disasters such as floods and earthquakes in remote areas. According to the agency, the data collected by ERS-2 is still used today. The ERS satellites have provided a stream of data that has changed our view of the world we live in, said Simonetta Celli, director of the agency's Earth observation programs in a statement. 
They have provided us with new insights into our planet, the chemistry of our atmosphere, the behavior of our oceans, and the effects of human activity on our environment, creating new opportunities for research and scientific applications. In 2011, the agency decided to end the satellite's operations and deorbit it, rather than adding to the spiral of space debris orbiting the planet. The satellite performed 66 deorbiting maneuvers in July and August 2011 before the mission officially concluded later that year on September 11. The maneuvers consumed the remaining fuel of the satellite and lowered its altitude, putting ERS-2's orbit on a slower spiral trajectory closer to Earth and re-entering the atmosphere within 15 years. This restricted the danger of an internal malfunction causing the satellite to break apart while still at an altitude used by active satellites. After 13 years of orbital degradation, the time has now come for this satellite to naturally, uncontrolled, enter the atmosphere to disintegrate, which occurred this Wednesday. During its operational life, both ERS-2 and ERS-1 collected a large amount of data on polar ice decline, changes in land surface, sea level rise, ocean warming, and atmospheric chemistry. The chances of a person being injured by space debris each year are less than 1 in 100 billion, approximately 1.5 million times lower than the risk of dying in a home accident, according to the agency. In any case, what other large objects have undergone uncontrolled re-entry? The most famous and largest is the American Space Station Skylab, which on July 11, 1979, underwent an uncontrolled re-entry. Its nearly 76 tons make Tiangong one almost a toy in comparison, and at the time, it unleashed. The mother of all satellite fall hysteria. The next is the Soviet space station Salyut 7, which re-entered on February 7, 1991, attached to the TKS Cosmos 1686 module with a combined mass of about 40 tons. If you want to see the complete list of more massive objects that have re-entered uncontrollably, Jonathan McDowell has created a very detailed and useful list. This list highlights the three central stages of the R-7 Semiorca rockets that launched the first three Sputnik satellites, with a mass of about 8 tons. Yes, what most people saw in the sky was the Block A stage, not the Sputnik satellites, which were much smaller, with the exception of Sputnik 2, which carried Leica, and was attached to the stage. Also notable is the Mars 96 Martian probe, weighing nearly 7 tons, which due to a proton rocket failure, landed in Bolivia instead of on Mars. As we can see, there are about 50 objects more massive than Tiangong-1, many of them upper stages of rockets. The list does not include slightly less massive rocket stages than Tiangong, of which there are one or more re-entries practically every year. Before you go, leave your opinion in the comments and subscribe.